The woke object to these terms of respect. They want the few and the proud to stop saying sir or ma'am out loud. A new report suggests the Marine Corps is considering dropping gendered language to avoid offending or misgendering leadership. They should get punished with push-ups for that. Except women suck at push-ups. A sexist would say. <laughs> Recruits would be banned from using phrases like sir or ma'am when addressing superiors. In turn, drill sergeants will ask recruits their pronouns before calling them maggots, pencil necks, and sissies. Tom Shalhoub, known for his sharp wit and unapologetic commentary, doesn't pull punches when it comes to hot button issues. In this scathing critique of proposed changes in the Marine Corps, Shilu showcases his talent for blending humor with hard-hitting social commentary. His ability to cut through political correctness and address controversial topics head-on has made him a standout voice in conservative media. The discussion on military traditions continues with equally pointed commentary. Gender-neutral identifiers like a person's rank would become the preferred way to address senior members. The policy recommendation comes from a $2 million study commissioned by the Corps which concluded that traditional ways Marines address each other could be seen as offensive. And to think, the Pentagon could have used that two million bucks for traditional expenses, like $400 hammers and $600 toilet seats. <laughs> Luckily, some top brass within the uh, branch are pushing back, refusing to cave to the woke pressure. Of course, most active duty service members and veterans know this is all garbage. This commentary exemplifies the kind of sarcasm and hyperbole that Shalou is known for, using humor to underscore serious points about government spending and priorities. On shows where immigration is discussed, the tone remains uncompromising. Our immigration mess elicits dueling border visits. Both former President Trump and President Biden visited the southern border this week, although only one of them remembers the Alamo. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Trump was an eagle pass criticizing the president's lax immigration policies, calling the situation Joe Biden's invasion. Meanwhile, old Joe went to Brownsville blaming Republicans for blocking immigration legislation. But is Biden really serious about the border? Apparently not, because the White House just made up a sweet new sounding euphemism for illegal aliens. Illegals are now referred to as newcomers according to this official White House fact sheet. The ridiculous rebrand is rightfully being roasted online for its shameless attempt to destigmatize a criminal act. This segment highlights the type of narrative Shalou excels at crafting, weaving current events into a story that supports a conservative viewpoint. The use of nicknames and mockery of political euphemisms is characteristic of the style Shalou has become known for. In discussions about political motivations, the cynicism that Shilu often brings to his commentary is evident. Well, that's just it, right? Somebody missed the memo. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was writing that based on Joe Biden 2020 and not Joe Biden now, not getting the memo that he was supposed to be a tough guy on immigration now. Yeah. I think it's so much of that. It, it, it's it all, all politics, right? Which is why I can't stand when politicians accuse each other of playing politics. Like, but that was what Biden, that's all he really said is, We'd love to fix this, but the Republicans won't let us. They blocked that deal. It's like, well, if it was really that important, then the deal would have just been about immigration and the border, for example, and not funded all these various foreign wars and other things. So yeah. it, it's, it's all politics. This kind of dissection of political maneuvering is a hallmark of the commentary style that Shalou has honed over his career. When addressing the real world impact of policies, the discussion doesn't shy away from controversial statements. We're seeing blue cities, people see this influx coming in. Even people who kind of sympathize with Biden's border policies, now they realize, like, what are we gonna do? We're kind of in up to our neck. And at, at some point, they can't turn off the spigot because they've already said the borders are open. Right, and, and I think Tyrus really nailed the point of this is a fundamental problem within this White House. This language of newcomers popping out no matter what Joe Biden does trying to look tough, it's all an act because fundamentally, this is their vision, to use Tyrus's phrase, of what America is. This commentary showcases the talent for painting vivid pictures of complex issues that Shilu brings to his appearances. The use of colloquialisms makes points accessible and relatable to the audience. When tackling state-level politics, the criticism is equally pointed. 
got nearly one out of three Californians living in or near poverty in the state. You've got a multi-billion dollar uh, budget deficit. You have the highest taxes or some of the highest taxes in the country, failing public schools, homeless crisis, crime crisis, uh, you know, housing crisis, as we're talking about. You know, the list goes on. Um, you've hundreds of thousands of American or of Californians fled the state during COVID. So I just don't know how you run on that record. And we've seen his approval ratings and job approval ratings crater in the state, even in a liberal state. So I, I just, I don't know how, I don't know what case he can make to be perfectly honest. This rapid fire listing of problems demonstrates the ability to synthesize complex issues into digestible sound bites, a skill that Shalou has consistently displayed throughout his career. When commenting on broader political trends, the sarcasm that Shalou is known for is palpable. It's now the middle of summer and everybody is taking a little time off. However, some people need a little more R&R &R than others. Take the Verzo Mill, Buck, you mean Bucksport, founded in 1829. That are made every, all this more extreme heat, this extreme heat more consequential. Approve all those outstanding military nominees now, now, now. If you could do anything at all, Joe, what would you do? I said I'd cure cancer. They looked at me like, why cancer? Because no one thinks we can. That's why, and we can. We end the cancer as we know it. The president's been at his beach house in Delaware all week, and Republicans are criticizing Sleepy Joe for all his downtime. In a recent statement, the RNC said, quote, as of July 7, 2023, Biden has spent 352 days, 39.2% of his presidency on vacation. Biden's vacation habits still outpaces virtually every other president in modern history. This commentary showcases the use of statistics to support arguments, combined with partisan rhetoric, a blend that Shilu has perfected in his appearances. Finally, the ability to draw unexpected parallels is evident in this discussion of public fascination with villains. Nobody likes a nice guy. First <laughs> yeah. You're laughing. Why is that? <laughs> You're married, right? Yeah. 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 Currently. Okay. Or I was when I left. Okay. Well, no, I'm just saying. I mean, like, I think that most people enjoy a bad guy, right? Yes. And it also is interesting because it says a lot about the people that like the bad guys. The article says people who like movie villains are more likely to be villainous themselves, which was really deep for me. <laughs> I read about that earlier. Yeah. I'm going to go to therapy on Monday. <laughs> We all have that. We sympathize, but maybe because they're always petting kittens and things like that, Charlie. No, I don't think it's that. I, but I, I, I thought it was really fascinating, the study. I, I always thought it was like an American thing. We like Jesse James. We like, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, Hannibal Lecter, that it was sort of an American thing. But I, apparently it's not. It's a fairly universal thing. This segment highlights the ability to tie pop culture observations to broader social and political commentary, a technique that helps make points more relatable and engaging to the audience. From military traditions to immigration policies, state governance, and even our cultural fascination with anti-heroes, Tom Shalhoub's appearances span a range of contentious issues. His direct approach, laced with humor and sarcasm, challenges viewers to consider the broader implications of current cultural and political trends. Shalhoub's willingness to tackle controversial topics head-on combined with his talent for distilling complex issues into memorable sound bites, has cemented his position as a distinctive voice in conservative media. Whether you agree with the views expressed or not, there's no denying that when Tom Shalou takes to the airwaves, he holds nothing back, delivering commentary that is both entertaining and thought-provoking.